We have a um, offering within our portfolio called the Cyber Application um, Platform. So what you're looking at is the output of that effort to align our offering to the IEC 62443 standard and the SAL um, 1, 2, and 3, that's the security assurance levels within that standard. So the core package um, are the basic controls that we suggest that you begin with. So this includes endpoint protection, patch management, backup and recovery, authentication, and secure remote access. So by implementing these baseline controls, you're actually addressing you know, the core cybersecurity risk, and it's a really excellent standing starting point. And once these are implemented, you can then build off of that foundation into the enhanced and optimized tiers. And the cyber application platform is a integrated solution where you can manage and maintain and implement the controls that are within the three packages. The benefit of this tool is it's a single pane um, solution where you can see all of your controls. There's also a dashboard element to it. So you can see the uh, key KPIs from the data collected um, in each one of the modules. So it saves time um, and effort when it comes to implementing controls as well as collecting information and producing reports. Um, and it also saves costs from an infrastructure perspective because it is one solution. So I want to take you into the CAP platform and give you a demo. What you're looking at here is a landing page for the cyber application platform. Like I mentioned, there's two key pieces. There's the dashboard module. Um, and then to the right of the dashboard module, you have all of the um, controls. And it's within these control modules that you're actually able to take action. So if you dive into the dashboard, You're, what you're looking at here is our standard dashboard that's pulling information from various different um, software. And it has you know, key standardized KPIs that are applicable um, for your cybersecurity posture. Two particular modules that I want to bring up are the viruses detected. So as an operator, if you see viruses detected pop up, this should immediately alert you that maybe you should either look into something or take a particular action. So as you dig into this module or this widget, you're able to see what the virus is, where it originated, and some other information that helps you begin the process of triaging. Um, and is really helpful when it comes to supporting things like remediation um, impact. The second one that I want to um, dive into is the USB assets. So if you look in here, what you're looking at is how many USB devices have been plugged into your machine. So as an operator, you wanna control the data flow of information into your particular environment. And one way to ensure that you have control over this is by managing and authorizing particular USB devices. In this particular screen, you're able to see the number of connections made, understand if they're approved, and also understand if any data um, has been transferred. And this is critical because malware um, incidents have resulted from the transfer of malicious, um, malicious signatures from a USB drive into a machine. So the key thing to remember within the dashboard is that no action can be taken, but it is giving you very specific data that is useful for the triage process. Um, and you can set up alerting so that you don't always have to kind of consume all of the information in the dashboard at once. So you can set and configure alerts to meet your needs. So you can either get this via email, you can get it via a uh, text, or you can set up your dashboard to alert. Um, and these alerts can be triggered for whatever reason seems relevant. So maybe number of new assets added to an environment or a number of devices connected crosses a particular threshold or a certain type of virus or CVS sort of thing has been noticed, you can set up an alert to say, hey, take action on this particular, on this particular alert. 
So like I mentioned, this dashboard can be configured to your preference. So out of the box, you're looking at the dashboard um, that comes with every um, CAP implementation, but you can pick and choose to say some of these widgets are more critical than others. So next I want to dig into an actual module. I'm gonna start with the backup and restore module. So within our CAP solution, you can either choose to have single capabilities, so just backup and restore, or you can collectively have all of the capabilities managed through one interface. So um, while you're looking at, while we dig into the backup and restore capabilities, this platform also has the ability to manage anti-malware um, and patch management through the same screen. So if you click on backup, if you click on the backup widget, yep, these are the machines that have been backed up. You can get um, information such as when the backup was last taken, um, how many versions of the backups are there, where that backup is stored, et cetera. And the reason that backups are critical is for, in most cases, um, once the cybersecurity incident has occurred, you want to be able to back up and restore your system with the least um, impact possible. And so that means that backups need to be done routinely, and they also need to be done and stored in a manner that are easy to access and easy to restore. All right, the next module that I'd like to jump into is the patch management module. One of the best ways to protect against um, malware and malicious activity is to make sure that security updates are applied routinely. So what you're looking at here um, are a couple of key metrics around um, patch implementation. It tells you which patches are available, if they've been initiated, and which patches have not been implemented. So from an operations standpoint, you're looking to only apply patches that have been validated and won't impact your operations. And so this basically gives you the status on those updates. So you can click into any of those widgets. So as you click into the widgets, you're able to drill down and get additional information so you can understand what type of update it is. So if it's a Microsoft update, if it's a Linux update, if it's been validated, how critical that update is to apply. Um, and then you can make the decisions around when to apply those updates. So you also have the capability to schedule um, the update or perform that update directly from the screen. Um, and lastly, we have the anti-malware um, capability as well. So the anti-malware, um, the anti-malware capability is signature driven. And what this does is identify if there are viruses or malicious um, URLs and whatnot that potentially could cause harm. So as you drill down into the alerts that are shown on the screen, some of the information that you'll find is the severity or the CVS associated with that particular virus. You'll also get information around how that virus was initiated, if it was blocked or allowed, when that virus was detected, and the type of virus that it is. And so once a virus is detected, there are a couple of different actions that you can take. You can either block that particular virus, you can quarantine it, or you can allow it to can remain into the environment if it's deemed non-critical or non-impactful. And all of that can be managed through this screen. So all of this capability that I went through is associated with the core package um, within the CAP platform. Um, but an enabler to ensure that, um, an enabler to ensure that you can manage these control points either um, independently, so the operator can do it themselves or they can do it remotely, is by leveraging the secure remote access platform. So we'll move into the SRA platform 
And there are two views from an SRA perspective. There is an administrator view and there's also an operations view. The administrator view allows for an administrator to log into the solution and basically set the permissions. So what I mean by this is if a user wants access into a particular environment, they can send a request and that request can either be approved or denied. Um, the other thing is they can set time limits on those sessions. So they have the ability to cut a session short um, if the work has been completed and that particular user no longer needs access. And then there's um, audit logs of all of the access that has been granted should the mal malicious activity happen um, during a remote, a secure remote access session. The other view that's available for the secure remote access um, capability is the actual operations view. So within this view, um, this is kind of where the work gets done or the remote operations gets done. So a user is able to log into the platform and begin to connect to a particular device like an HMI screen and per perform a task. So what you're looking at here is a Foxboro HMI that needs a particular maintenance task performed. So the user is able to remotely connect into um, the system they have to be authenticated, as you saw, log in, the connection has to be approved, and they're able to make the maintenance changes that are, that are requested. Additionally, an additional security um, feature is that these sessions can get recorded. So not only does the access and authentic authentication need to be granted, we also can go back after a session is recorded and look at the actions that were taken to make sure no malicious activity has happened. And then finally, an administrator is able to terminate the session once the task is completed, or if the tasks that are occurring are not necessarily the planned tasks. So you can go in, tell the reason for disconnecting, and that person will automatically be disconnected from that particular HMI. So comprehensively, um, these different modules and capabilities make up the core um, CAP tier. Um, and these are the baseline controls and the controls that manage, like we mentioned, the majority of the initial risk that comes with connecting your devices. Now I'd like to transition from talking about products to talking about how we as Schneider can support our customers over the operational life cycle. So it's important to us that we manage and handle cybersecurity from the project initiation through the entire life cycle of that asset. And what we mean by that is there's various different steps to supporting um, a product. So we're able to do and offer consulting services. We do design and implementation. We can perform monitoring activities maintenance as well as training activities. So in order to do so, we have a full suite of offers and they're aligned to four different tiers. Those tiers include permit, protect, detect, and respond. So you'll see um, the various different control points that we have in place. Um, and the reason that our, our portfolio is comprehensive is we wanna be able to support our customers regardless of how mature their security posture is and or how mature their cybersecurity organization is. So there are customers that want full support from control implementation up through supporting that particular product and others that just require a service or a product here and there. And regardless, we're able to support over the life cycle of that particular asset. So as I just mentioned, we have a very comprehensive cybersecurity portfolio meant to cover all of the cybersecurity control points that our customers require. So I'm going to transition back to Tom and he'll tell you about some resources available to you to connect with us and also um, to connect with our cybersecurity team. Thank you, Dee. As I wrap up our session, I want to leave you with a few key thoughts. Schneider Electric strengthens your cybersecurity and believes that 
industry collaboration is critical for cybersecurity going forward. Also, you can reach out to Schneider Electric for a cybersecurity assessment. And lastly, regardless of maturity, we can help enhance your digital resilience. If you would like to learn more, our Cybersecurity Virtual Academy provides a wealth of information to help you understand the cyber risks and opportunities in today's digital landscape. Be sure to bookmark it today to get the latest insights, information and ideas all delivered from leading cybersecurity professionals. Visit at se.com slash cybersecurity dash academy. If you would like to arrange an assessment, you can get in touch with our cybersecurity experts with the email address you can see on your screen now, and that is cybersecurity dash services at se.com. This now brings our session to a close, and thank you again for joining us today.